you on how you create a linear path in Scratch. So uh, I uploaded my own sprite already. So it's just a matter of, you know, you doing the same thing, you can upload your own backdrops, you know, that part of it. So what I'm going to do is just take you through the, the process, right, uh, fairly quickly, right? So the first thing you need to do is define your variables, right? So uh, we need X and Y variables that we can have control over that also correspond to the X and Y variables that are in the display. All right, so what I'm going to do is make a variable. I'm going to call it X for all sprites. I'm going to make a variable, another one. I'm going to call it Y, also for all sprites. You see these uh, icons show up, or meters anyway, show up on the upper left-hand part of the screen. We don't want that, or I don't want that. So I uncheck these boxes, they go away. All right, so what I want to do is establish where this sprite is going to start its journey and then we'll worry about how it's going to carry out its journey. So we're going to create a motion. Oh, I started dragging it for some reason. Uh, and that's go to, if you fix the sprite in the position you want it to be in, you'll see the measurements for X and Y, negative uh, 190 and negative 75. They adjust automatically in the motion uh, block display. So you see that there is one that says go to negative 190, negative 75. So I have that ready to rock and roll. And right? that's where I want to go when I start my uh, program. All right? <clears throat> I want to set my x value to be equal to that number. All right. So under variables, you see you have the option to set my variable. Well, let's set x, the variable x, to be equal to that negative 190. So that's the first step in correlating the two X's, the, the one that I created and the one that's already built in. All right. Now, what I want to do is establish when I want this process to end. All right. So I know I want it to start at the, the value of X equals negative 190, but I want to kind of decide in what neighborhood I want it to end. So I want it to end over here but it's all going to be relative to the slope, all right? So I might have to adjust some things, but let me, let me put it over here, for instance. All right, that would be an X value of 189, all right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to repeat until X is equal to 189, all right? So we're going to repeat a, a linear operation until X gets to that value of 189. And then if we have to tweak it, we will, all right? So I go to Control, look for the one that says Repeat Until, I go to my operators. I got a, a nice equal sign here. See, it's in the shape of a hexagon, just like the open spot there. I'm going to put in a 189. All right. Now, you might be tempted to just type the value X in here, but Scratch is going to not understand what you're talking about there. It's, it's going to think that you're trying to input a numerical value as an equality, and it's going to get confused. If you want to tell it that you're equating a variable to that number, then you drag it from the variables uh, portion of the display. All right, so I'm going to drag over an X. All right, so that would be until X is equal to 189. All right, and then I could put that right on in there. Right on in there is what I'm going to say. All right, now what I want to do is create a linear function. All right, so that linear function, yeah, we could we could have it kind of work in a bunch of different ways, but we, we do know a linear function is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to use the set. Set x, well, how about set y? Set it to what? Well, set it to a linear function. So let's go back to operators. All right. So it's going to be the product of some value and x added to some other value. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a sum and a product, all right? Now, I know that X is gonna be involved in this as one of the factors of that product, all right? So I'm gonna snag an X and put it in there. The other value will be a slope. Now you can type in numerical values, and you've, you've done it a bunch of times already, so Scratch understands that. So let's say I've just put in, as a default, let's say, let's say I put in one, 
All right. Now, what I can do is I can put this in to my addition operator. I, I tend to think of it as a reverse of the order of operations. All right. So normally you do uh, multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. So when it comes to setting up your, your equation, you're going to do the operation of addition first then the operation of multiplication. Now just be careful because, you know, depending on how you scroll over here, it might highlight the wrong thing. If you take the left tip of this uh, little pill-shaped operator, the left tip of it, and use that as kind of like the, the pointer, then you'll get it right where you want it to be and it'll go in the right place, obviously. All right, so I need a y-intercept. You know, it, and you can kind of decide on what you want that y-intercept to be, but it kind of made sense that if our x value is starting off at negative 190, then maybe you want your y value to be the y value that corresponds with that negative 190. So we can make that negative, we can make that negative 75. You know, we, we could do a lot of different, I mean, you can just leave it as 1x plus 0 if you want. Right? It's a relationship between x and y. How do you want the x and y's to be related to one another? All right? So that's really all you're up against here. So basically you just want to decide what your y value is going to be at, uh, in an initial sense. All right? So we're, we're repeating this process until x is equal to 189, we're starting it at negative, what is it, negative 190. It, it, it's really up to you. So let's say, let's say I make it 100, you know, because the numbers are pretty big. You may have to just kind of play it out and see how that goes. All right. So I'm going to pop that in there. Now, I haven't told Desmos what to do with this information. Right now, it's just computing y values based off of whatever x is. Right, I actually wanted to go to the location dictated by this operation. So that's going to be a motion. So go to, but we want it to be a variable motion. So go to whatever the x value is corresponding to the y value. So I pop that in there. All right. And then I want to determine what I'm changing x by. So that's the thing. Otherwise, it, it's... It's going to compute the operation and then just, you know, just go to that X location, but then never, never change. You know, it'll just stay at that location. It's always going to go to just X equals 189. You know, it's, it's repeating that process in a loop. But if I make it so that it's changing, so you go to the change function which I lost. Oh, duh. It's under variables. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the wrong orange. Change my variable will change the x variable by one specifically. And then it'll allow for that 189 to become a 190, then a 191, and a 192, come up with a corresponding y value, and then plot in those locations. So let's put this together and see what happens. Now we want a way to initialize this. So we'll go to events and we'll go with the green flag being clicked and we'll see. Okay, so I have a motion here. It looks like a linear function that's increasing according to a slope of one. It looks like it's reasonably a slope of one. Now there's that little weird sliding business over on the other end. I don't know how I feel about that. So maybe Maybe I wanted this to be lower. You know, maybe I don't want it all the way in the upper. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I don't want it at negative 190, negative 75 to start. Maybe I want it much lower than that. In which case, I could do something like negative 201 to negative one, uh, comma negative 157. You'd have to change all the other values accordingly. Not a two. And repeat until x is equal to 189. Okay, we'll see. Maybe that's fine. Oh, it jumped up. 
go to negative 201. Oh, you know what? I must have, it must have not set the way I wanted it to. It's really negative 207. Well, actually, it looks like it's fine. Negative, let's say negative 210. Oh, sorry, negative 208. Negative 174. The x value should correspond with that. The x value is going to again repeat until we get to that number. Everything else looks fine, but it's still doing that jump. Where is it? You know, we can actually just drop it down somewhat because there seems to be some kind of, I, I'll, I'll call it a glitch, but it's it's bringing me to that negative 20 whatever, negative 208, thinking that when I bring it to the lower left-hand corner, you see now it's, now it's putting it at negative, negative 185. When it, yeah, it's, it's, it's giving us nonsensical values here. All right, so what we can do is just really make this extreme. Let's say it's like negative 250, comma, I don't know, negative 200. And see what that does. All right, so that, that definitely brought it far enough to the left, but maybe not far enough down. All right, it's still angling it up a little bit too much so I can tweak my slope if I want to but I can also tweak my y-intercept and right, I can make this a 50 if I want change that it reduces the height of your initial starting point so it's getting it a little bit further along the way but you may also look at it and say okay based off the slope that I'm using maybe you're maybe you're stuck using that slope if that's the case maybe there's no way to get from the left side to the right side without having that crazy dragging along the top. So in which case, what you can do is say, all right, well, maybe I don't go all the way to 189. Maybe I go to 100. So I'll run that. And then once I get to 100, assuming it doesn't take me off the page, it's so close. Uh, it's just a little too high. How about... How about 75? 75 ought to be good. All right. So once you get to that point, you could do something else to get you the rest of the way. All right. Maybe you do another linear function. All right. Maybe you do... Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's stopping at 74, probably because the, the way the y-intercept is, it wouldn't allow for us to get to a corresponding value for y that makes sense based off of the equation. All right. But... We got to this location, now we just got to bridge the gap the rest of the way. So maybe you use a glide function, maybe you use a different type of linear function, maybe, maybe you get a little, little, uh, little kooky and try to do some other type of function, it's all up to you. All right. So hopefully you find that helpful, or found that helpful. I'm giving a thumbs up at the screen as if somebody might see that. Enjoy.